Mayor Daryl Steinberg, thank you again for hanging out. It's really great to be with you, Mark. So you deserve better. Did you in your wildest dreams think you'd have to sit down for a half hour with a knucklehead like me? Well, you know, it was a very tough decision, but uh, I thought about it. I said, why not? <laughs> this is the one arena you know you're safe because technically I'm not a journalist, so you know there's no ambush. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm ready for anything. You know? Well, Cause good! Because that, that's what I signed up for. <laughs> I do have an ambush. <laughs> I know I promised your people it wouldn't happen, but I found some compromising oh, no. photos. No! And I'd like to share them right now. Turn this off! Who is that? <laughs> what do we need to know about that guy? <laughs> you know, some say a face only a mother would love. That's not true. I got to say, you're adorable, man. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, actually, I think um, I look the same. Just things, a little bit older. Things have been said, but if people said to me, what do you think about Mayor Steinberg? I'd rarely say adorable. Until now. Until now, <laughs> yeah. You know, I think anytime I go to a uh, community meeting where people are yelling at me, I'm just going to put up that picture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this lives inside. Well, let's, how old exactly. are you there? How old do you think? I think I was two or three. Maybe well, four. Okay. I don't yeah. know, maybe 15. <laughs> what is your... <laughs> that's what I looked like at 15. I was a late bloomer. What, um, what memories do you have? Now, what was your first memory? Clearly, you don't remember three, but what is your earliest memory? You know, I remember a good childhood. I grew up middle class down uh, on the peninsula mm -hmm. uh, in the Bay Area and, you know, had two loving parents, two younger brothers, and, uh, you know, had, uh, we weren't wealthy, but, you know, had everything we needed, including a community. I, you know, for me, got a little older, it was sports flag football, basketball, little league baseball, sure. then tennis, you know, just depended on the season and community always, you know, provided uh, for me. And, you know, all the, you know, that old book, everything I know I learned in kindergarten. Sure. It's kind of true. Everything I know I learned, you know, as a young guy about, uh, about life. Now, at that age, at kindergarten, you know nothing of politics, but if you would have said to you at kindergarten, would you like to be mayor someday? What would the response have been? What is a mayor? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Once someone explained what that might mean, what would you have said? Exactly. I wanted to know what four plus six <laughs> okay. was. But, uh, you know, I started getting interested in, uh, in politics, government, probably when I was in like the fifth grade. I mean, I remember that early. Somewhere between this and this. Oh, no. This. <laughs> oh, you got that one, too. <laughs> would would you have gotten elected the, with those pants? The homecoming dance there with my date. Debbie. Yeah, look at those pants. That was 1974. And let me tell you something. Um, as I like to say, some guys have it. <laughs> and, and you have and, it. And I wasn't one of them. <laughs> not, not true. <laughs> and the pants are back, by the way. Do you keep in touch with her? Uh, no, but our fam. But look at me. What I like is uh, that I had a lot of hair back in the day. Uh, and oh my God, you know what? You tell young people how fast time goes and they don't believe it. Sure. And yet time goes really fast. All right, let's celebrate okay, some other people. Got? Oh, no. All right, okay. go down the line. So that's me in my early 20s in the, you know, bearded, uh, I'm going to be who I want to be stage. Everybody kind of had that Serpico look back then. My younger brother, Rick, who's eight and a half years younger than me, he's a rabbi. Nice. My father, 88 years old, still doing well, st still teaching. Sure. Community college. And my brother, Jeff, who does sojourn of the past he takes high school students on sojourns of the civil rights movement my two brothers are degenerates so there's no pressure whatsoever <laughs> what kind of pressure is it having well, these two guys especially the, a rabbi i'm the oldest um i'm the oldest so you know i always felt the pressure but i'm proud of them they you know they do good things in the world yeah. and uh uh no pressure um you know he's a he's the man of faith he teaches civil rights and uh, I'm a politician. <laughs> You're not the black sheep of the family because of I'm politics. not. Actually, I believe being a politician is an honorable thing. Mm -hmm. I really do. If you do it right? If you do it right. right. Exactly right. Let's go back to this guy. They say uh, kids say the darndest things. So we want to bring about some kids and some tough questions for you. You of ready? Of course. Let's go do it. My name is Tamara. Is it fun for to be the mayor? Is it fun being the mayor? Is it Tamara? Is it fun being the mayor? Most days, it's a lot of fun. Actually, it is a great honor and a great responsibility because when you have the responsibility of, of helping others, helping you know, hundreds of thousands of people, you get up every day and you, you do your very, very best. There are some days where it's really hard because um, in our society, in our country, we have what's called a democracy, which means people have the right 
and the obligation to disagree with you when they think you're wrong. And so it can sometimes be really, really hard, especially when people are upset. But mostly it's fun to be mayor because it is always fun to be doing anything in life where you get to help people. Excellent, excellent. Uh, you say it can be tough at times, and, th and that sets us up for the next question. Nehemiah may want to follow in your footsteps. Go ahead, Nehemiah. My name is Nehemiah, I'm 11 years old, and I want to be a mayor someday. How does it feel to be a mayor of hundreds and millions of people? And any recommendations on how old you were when you, when you first thought of being a mayor? And any uh, advice for me? So Nehemiah, thank you for the great question. I don't know when I started thinking about be, being mayor, but I started thinking about serving and being involved when I was in the fifth grade. Because when I was in the fifth grade, I ran for class president for the first time. And I won, and I, it was a lot of fun. And I realized that, um, hey, maybe this is something that would be fun to continue doing. And so what advice do I have for you, Nehemiah, or any young person who thinks about being mayor? or wants to do anything good in life. Three keys, work hard, because there is no substitute for working hard. Always be reading a good book, by the way, because that's how you learn. Number two, be kind to other people. In this society these days, everyone says, the only way to get ahead is to be mean to others. No, be nice to other people, because when you're nice, they'll be nice back, and you'll be surprised how much farther you can go when people like you. And third, care about your community. Care about something other than just yourself. Pick a cause. It could be anything. Maybe it's climate. Maybe it's, um, it's alleviating poverty for people who um, uh, don't have enough. It could be anything, but pick your cause and make that something that you care about and that you work hard on. So three things. Work hard, be kind to others, and care about your community and something just beyond yourself. My goodness, you're good at this. Have you ever thought of running for office? I, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I've thought about it and I've rejected it. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got a shot. If Nehemiah were here, he would probably ask a follow-up question I wanted to jump in on. What Go. book are you reading right now? I'm always reading a book, and right now I'm reading The Best and the Brightest by David Halberstam about uh, the Vietnam War and how some of the leaders who got us into the war were among the quote best and the brightest but they didn't necessarily have very good judgment and so I was reading about leadership and about how people um, from history have done really good things and sometimes uh, not so good things and you know you try to incorporate all that and 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 learn you got to be a lifelong learner and I always say to young people, read books, books, sure. books, books. Yep. That way other people can make the mistakes for you. You can learn from their mistakes it, rather than make your own. Exactly right, exactly right. Plus reading is just fun. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, I need to set you up for this. A lot of pressure now because this is a big star. This is a YouTube influencer. His name's Zayden. Are you ready? Zayden, let's go. All right, Zayden, hit it. Hello, Mayor Steinberg. My name is Zayden Hoover, and I have a question to ask. What's the hardest part of being mayor? Well, there are a couple of hard parts of being mayor, Zayden. I think the most, uh, the hardest thing is wanting really badly to see everybody in your city um, doing well and having a good life and knowing that isn't always the case for people, that people are struggling and wanting to do better and wanting to do more and uh, wanting to see people's lives better. And sometimes that distance between the reality and and your efforts to try to make it better uh, can be really really hard. And so, I've learned that you know you have to be in this for the long haul in life, um, not just as mayor, but just for whatever you care about. Be in it for a long time because progress sometimes takes a while. It doesn't all the change doesn't always happen overnight. But if you stick with it, then you get to look back over time and say, wow. Look what I was part of, of, of helping create. Good advice to a YouTube influencer. Now, you know, has that changed your career at all? That back in the day, you just had to worry about the networks and the usual local TV peeps, but now you got all these influencers. I'm telling you, Mark, that it's changed a lot. Um, and much of it for the better. I mean, to be able to go on Zayden's show, what a cool thing, and I'm there. Some of the social media, I think, has got a downside to it. I really do, because it allows people to be anonymous and, and be a little bit meaner. You know, sure. people are really not mean when they see you face to face usually. Yeah. 
But social media, I think it's something we got to grapple with because it's got a lot of good things. But then a lot of things I think we have to be careful about. I want more, I want kids to have more interaction with each other. I want the dialogue to be in person. I want the debates to be in school or, or in the community, not just over social media. So that's my plug for the day. Absolutely. Uh, did you hear that, Zayden? Take that to your show. Yeah. Uh, all right, Mia has a question for you. Go ahead, Mia. Hello, my name is Mia Robbins, and I go to RFDC, and I'm eight, and I have three questions for you. I wanted to ask you, what are you gonna do to help the homeless over Sacramento to like give them food? And the second one is, what are you gonna do to help schools and have people learn more? And the third question is, what are you gonna do? Like, I mean, I heard you're hiring like police officers and I want to be a police officer when I grow up. All right, a lot to think about there. She went for the deep dive and three questions. So homeless, schools, and she wants to be a cop. Well, hey, three great questions. Um, let me start with homelessness. This beautiful city, which um, is growing and creating so much new opportunity, its biggest challenge is affordable housing and homelessness, no question about it. I probably spend half my time on this issue. And let me tell you something, we are serious about doing something, if we can't cure it, to at least make it better. What we're doing in the city, we've identified about 25 different sites where we're gonna build shelters. You know what I believe in this society, in this city and everywhere? There should be a right to housing. Housing should not just be an if, an option. People should have a right to safe shelter and housing. That's what we're gonna try to achieve in the city. Question number two, uh, what was question number two again? She wants to know about the schools. About the schools. So the city does not run the schools, but we work very closely with the schools. And um, we're doing a lot to invest more in youth programs for young people after school. We, um, are, we got a bunch of money from the federal government through President mm -hmm. Biden's um, um, American Rescue Plan. And we're putting a lot of that money directly into job training. Uh, and youth programs. And so we work with the school district because, you know, a, a city is only as good as its schools and, and our kids. Sure. And man, you know, remember that picture back there? It turns over really quickly. And those kids, you, Mia, you're going to be in positions like mine someday soon. And we want to make sure that you uh, have every opportunity to succeed in life. Speaking and of third, words. Yeah, during the commercial break, in fact, we almost thought we were going to have to stop down because we had police activity and she wants to be a police officer. Well, you know what? Um, I encourage you, Mia, because uh, to be a police officer is to be a, a public servant who um, protects the people and helps the people. You know, uh, it's a tough profession. And, and in these days, it's a tough profession because, profession because there are some police officers, obviously, who have not done the right thing, but the vast majority do. And um, to become a police officer, to be able to help the community, uh, to be able to protect the community, I think that's a great thing. And I think you should go for your dream. Absolutely.